Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Isn't it good to be in God's house on a Wednesday night? Amen. Thankful for all of the men and women that have given their lives in service to this country. I know that we just celebrated Memorial Day, so I just wanted to mention that and uh, wanted to ask you guys to pray for me. Uh, Friday, I go in for surgery on my left hip, so if you would remember that, amen. We're going to open up service and prayer. Um, I just wanted to talk for a second before we opened up. Katrina and I are going to sing a song. Um, it was written and recorded by Brother Anthony Trimble, and I know that I've talked about him before. Um, he's kind of been an inspiration to me. I grew up with him and his brother. And Brother Anthony has gone on to be with the Lord. He passed last year uh, to colon cancer. And he, in the midst of his trials, in the midst of his battle with colon cancer, um, which went on for several years, he began to write and he began to record. And he wrote two or three albums worth of songs and recorded two or three albums worth of songs and they have begun to bless the apostolic Pentecostal world and anybody that listens to them and the song that we are going to sing tonight it's called He Can and the song is an acknowledgement of the power of God right because no matter no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're facing, no matter the trial, the struggle, the situation, right? And we've all got them. We've all got trials. We've all got struggles. We've all got mountains that we're facing that we don't know how we're going to climb and we don't know how God is going to make a way for us. We don't know what He's going to do. But the point of this song is to build up our faith and to remind us that He can. Right? Sometimes we look at our struggles and our situations and we think that they're too big. We know they're too big for us to handle, but we, we sometimes we think that they're too big for God to handle. How could, how could God possibly deal with this issue? How could God possibly move in this situation? How could He possibly touch me in the way that I need? How could He possibly work in my family? How could He possibly work in my job? How could He possibly work in my financial situation? How could he work in, in whatever it is that we need, right? Our health, our, our mentality, our, our uh, financial stresses, stresses our, our kids, our family, our lost loved ones. How can God possibly move in that situation? But tonight, I just want you to, as we sing this song, I want you to remember that God can move, right? He can move. When it seems that you're looking at an empty road, that there's no help coming down that dusty road, right? That there's no promise coming down that dusty road. Remember that God can move, right? He is able, amen? And He is more than able. He is willing, amen? God is willing to move in our situations. So let's pray, and then I want you to worship with us as we sing this song. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, Father. We know that you are a mighty God, that you are able to do exceeding abundant over all that we can ask or think according to your power that works in us. Father, we know that you can do it, oh God. We know that you are able to touch us, oh Lord, and we know that you can touch us, Father. We know that you see our needs, oh Lord. We know that you are a God who can walk on water. We know that you are a God who can calm the raging seas. We know that you are a God who can heal the blind, oh Lord, the sick, the lame, oh God, the dumb. Oh Lord, you can even raise the dead, oh God. We know, oh Lord, that you can do it, oh God. We know that you can provide for us. We know that you can deliver us, oh Lord, that you can save us, Father, and we believe it, oh God, and we receive it, Father. We worship you and we thank you, Jesus. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you. Come on, can we shout it? Hallelujah. Can we give him some praise in the house tonight and welcome him into this place? Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Home seems to have left long ago. 
no help coming down your dusty road. But my Lord, who was faithful and is true, he's here and he has come to carry you.
on if you believe he can lift him up tonight Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Amen. Can I testify for just a minute on how God can? Amen. I'm one that doesn't have medical insurance, and I live on faith, okay? And every now and then, I have to go to the doctor. And I went a few months ago, and I had to pay for my office visit, but I had to have lab work done. Lab work, Brother Hunt, is not cheap. And they did some in the office and some they had to send out to a lab. And she said, uh, I'm going to do it as cheap as possible. And I said, okay. I said, go ahead. I said, I'll pay it. I said, they'll get it when I get it. That's just the only way I can put it. I'll pay it when I can. Most of the time, they'll take payments. So I got my bill in and I seen how much it was. And I thought, well, they really like my blood. It was expensive. And I said, I set it up on payments and set it up on auto payments so the way I didn't have to worry about it. I just let it come out of my bank account. And they took my first payment out and they sent me an email and told me thank you and everything. And I was getting ready, brother man, for the next payment to come out. I received an email that told me that my bill was paid in full on one payment. God can. God can. When you put all your faith and trust in God and God sees that you're giving Him your all and you're living for God wholeheartedly, God can. God will take care of the needs of His people. Amen? I believe that 100%. God will take care of the needs of His people. He will fight your battles. You don't have to fight them. All you got to do is realize God has got my back. Give it to Him. Just give it to Him. God will take care of the need. I live strictly on Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith, not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I may not see it taking place right now, but I know that now faith is going to take place and it's going to happen because I serve a now God. I serve a God that happens today, yesterday, and forever. He changes not. He's the God that works miracles today and forever. He still moves. He's still alive and well. He died and they buried him, but he arose. And he's still doing the same miracles today. Amen. Hey man, another miracle. I've been without a leg brace for two days. Billy said, are you okay? I said, I'm going to be okay. I'm tired of wearing it. I can't function right. I'm, yeah, it's still sore, but you know what? I still serve a miracle work in God. God's going to take care of it. It's all going to be all right. Why? Because I trust God. God's healed me before and he'll do it again. Hey man. Hey man, I ain't even supposed to do that. I'm supposed to take your money again. Amen. But it's hard sometimes, Brother Hunt, just not to tell the goodness of God and what God has done. And I feel like I would be cheating him if I didn't tell you what God has done. But God is so good. Amen. And if the ushers would come, we'll get you money now. Amen. Amen. If y'all pray with me. God, I ask you, God, God, that you bless this offering, Lord. God, that you take it, God, and you multiply it, God. God, that you take it, Lord. God, and use it, God, God, for your goodness, God. God, we ask you, God, to bless each and every one tonight, Lord. Bless the ones that have to give and the ones just the same, God. In Jesus' name, amen. don't have to worry no don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning troubles they don't last always 
Remember there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. With Jesus I can take it, with Jesus I can stand, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand, no matter what may come my way, my life is in believe that let's just clap our hands to the Lord my life is in his hands hallelujah Woo, glory oh I love that song sister Reuben. that's beautiful song tonight my life is in his hands no matter what's going on I just trust God you know a lot of people live for God according to how they how things are going 
if I'm having a good day, I go and live for God. If not, I'm just going to give up, throw in the rag. It ain't worth it. And we, But you know what? You have to live for God in the good days, the bad days, the days you don't feel good, the days you're upset at somebody, the days, the days uh, somebody's mad at you. It doesn't matter the circumstance. God is still God. He's still the great I am. He's still the Savior. He's still the healer. Amen. He's still the way maker, promise keeper. Amen. He's still God. If you believe that, shout amen. He is still God. I'm so thankful. Amen. The first song they sung today, He Can Make a Way. And I thought about how many times has God made a way for you and me, but we thought it wasn't really what I wanted, so I, I just go ahead and keep praying. God, I'm looking for an answer. Look for an answer. God sends another helicopter. Y'all heard that story? And you don't want that. God, you deliver me in a miraculous way. Then God sends a boat to get you out of that, that storm, that deep water. But then you didn't want that. You wanted God to show in a miraculous way, and you let that bypass. But, you know, God, God always sends what we need. Let's be ready to accept what he sends our way. Praise God. How many knows you don't have to like it for God to, God to bring you through it, though? Just because you don't like what's happening doesn't mean God's not using that circumstance for somebody else. You might not like that song that she just sang. I loved it, Sister Vivian, but it fed me. It might not feed you, but it might feed somebody across the way. Amen. Let's, let's, let's make sure we always realize God's got a reason. He said his word wouldn't return void either. So whatever is preached, make sure you pray for it, that it will go do what it needs to do. Praise God. I'm excited tonight for, to be able to be in church. How about you? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm excited to be in church. Praise God. We have youth classes all across the campus, but I want to first of all say um, Brother Michael uh, Brummett will be filling in for the summer as our youth pastor. Let's give him a hand. We're excited. He's home from school. And uh, praying God to use you in a mighty way in, for the youth this, this summer. God bless you. And our children's church can be dismissed as well. Love our, our classes all across the campus. Every Wednesday night, you may not know this, but we have one class that's studying for a Bible quiz and tournament. And they do that every Wednesday night, and they actually are having an opportunity. It depends on how they do this weekend. They're going to go, I think, to the Nationals. So our guys, our, our girls and boys are doing a great job. Let's give our Bible quizzes our hand. They can't hear you, but they're in their studying now about the Word of God. Praise God. And those of you who are in here, we're going to go to the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 25 tonight. Genesis chapter 25. Don't forget, we have revival this weekend. We're excited. We're doing a three-night revival. We're going to see how that goes. And I want to make sure you put it on your calendar Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday at 7, Saturday 7, and Sunday is 1130. Everybody say 1130. So be here 1130 Sunday for a good time in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Genesis chapter 25, verse number 29. If you got your Bibles, turn there with me tonight. Praise God. If not, it would be on the board as well. And uh, we're trying to, we're experiencing something tonight. Uh, we got two different kinds of scriptures up there tonight. And I don't know if you can read the bottom one or not, but uh, it says the same thing the top does. God bless you, brother, uh, for you guys. We, we found a way. Hope we can keep it going. We love our Hispanics, and uh, we want to make sure you can read what's up there as well. Praise the Lord. Genesis 25, 29, and Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Praise the Lord. Lay your Bibles down behind you and help me pray tonight. God, I love you. Thank this opportunity just to share your word to these great folks tonight. I pray, God, that I never preach your word without anointing. God, and I pray tonight you give me that direction of anointing and you speak through me, Lord, the way you want it to go. Let your word go forth, God, and I know you're able to use it in a mighty way. Condition hearts to receive your word. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You can be seated. So I started kind of in the middle of a story here tonight with uh, Esau and Jacob. And we know tonight's scripture reading is, tells us the story of these two brothers, 
and Esau and Jacob were twins, and we know the story, uh, but I want to kind of just share a little bit of it with you tonight, one of whom was willing to sell his birthright, and Esau was uh, a cunning hunter. He was out to work hard and hunt for the food and do what was right, and Jacob was the one who stayed around, and he knitted, and he probably cooked in the house and done all the housework. He was the more laid-back kid, and uh, in our day, it probably was more or less a, ma- a mama's baby, and Esau was a daddy's boy. Esau was a daddy's boy because daddy liked the cunning hunting and the, the hard worker that he was. But at, Esau had got to a point, he was out one day hunting and working for the food and got so to the point of almost to die, faint the Bible says, that to the point his life was almost gone. And his brother was the one that was making all the homemade food and knew how to cook. And he said, brother, you got to feed me because I'm about to die. And just to break it down in our language tonight, he says, uh, will you give me your birthright and I'll, I'll go ahead and give you some food. And, of course, he, he said, what good is it going to do me if I die anyway? I'm going to tell the church something tonight. Make sure whatever you do, you don't sell out to the devil. Don't sell out for his games. What good would it do me anyway? I'm too sick to receive anything anyway. You know, that's what he was saying. I Go ahead and I promise, and he swore his birthright away and to the point of he just gave it away for a bowl of stew pretty much. Uh, and But why would Esau, my question tonight is, why would Esau relinquish such a valuable asset for only a temporary need? And that's what I'm going to talk to us tonight, just the temporariness of our life. But I want to talk to you, title this, Develop a Long-Term Focus. Develop a Long-Term Focus is what we need to do in our lives today because we live in a time today, if we're not careful, I feel like we will relinquish our birthright, our salvation, the thing that we have that's going to get us out of here. A lot of times, if we're not careful, we will sell out for a temporary need in our life. And it's just temporary. How many knows everything you did today is just temporary? But you see how much emphasis and time that we put on today. And we have to. The Bible says a man that don't work should not eat. We have to work. We understand that. But even your job is temporary. Matter of fact, your job could be gone tomorrow just like that. Your, your, your house could be gone tomorrow. Was it Job? He lost everything he had within a matter of few hours. Everything was gone. And Job looked at the, his wife and said, you talk foolish. You know, she told him, you ought to curse God and die because look at everything you've lost. But Job realized that the materialism things he had could be gone in just a matter of a few seconds. And he realized, and he looked at his wife, he said, you talk foolish. This is not what I'm working for. This is not what I'm striving for. All that I have lost, oh, I loved it and I cherished it. I had it. It was my living. It was my children. All that was taken away from a matter of, of just a few moments, a few hours. But what he done, he realized that I'm not, that's not what I'm longing to build my, that's not my focus right now. And I feel like if we're not careful as a people, our, we will lose focus on what we should be focusing on. And it's easy for any of us and all of us because we won't, 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 won't. We are the most wanting people you ever seen in your life. We all are. We all, it might be a different want that we have. Your want might be dresses. Or my want might be shoes or motorcycles or tools. You know, my, that's the men's wants are different than the women's. I understand that. But we are a wanting generation. We want everything we, that our flesh makes our flesh feel good. But why would Esau relinquish, as I said, such a valuable asset of a temporary need? According to Hebrews, now let's, let's show you something. Hebrews 12, his, his foolish decision sprang from a godless heart. It was a godless heart. Watch what he said in Hebrews 12 and 16. He said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, this is Hebrews talking about the Old Testament, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. When I read that, I just thought, wow, wow. Esau was put into the same category with the fornicators and was called a profane person. For selling out his birthright. when He was going to die anyway, but he was put in the same category as a fornicator because of what he was going to sell out for. A profane, a profane person is what he was called. I was so curious, Sister Johnson, I had to go back and look up the word profane because I wanted to know what was the writer calling Esau profane. He said he's a profane person. 
for selling out here. And I looked up that word profane, which meant relating or devoted to that which is not sacred or biblical. Secular rather than religious. You see, so I thought that moment right there, if we're not careful, could any of us in this room become that profane person? that he was talking about in Hebrews chapter 12 and 16. Every one of us sitting in this room, if we're not careful, we can become profane and trade out our walk with God for something that looks really good. And it don't take much. I mean, it might just be a simple bowl of stew that will make us profane. But in other words, what Esau didn't value what God had given him. He didn't value it. And I want to ask you today, what kind of value do you put on your walk with God? What kind of value is your walk with God worth? How, how much would you sell out God for? Now, it's easy right now. You'd probably be like Peter. Oh, Lord, I go to the end of the earth with you. I, I wouldn't trade nothing for God. Peter was put in a position that way. He says, yeah, but before the cock crow, you'll deny me. You'll deny me thrice before the cock crow. And he did. We know how he did. But see, Peter stood when he's in a firm. You know, it's easy to say that when you're in a good apostolic service. You know it? When revival is going on, everybody's feeling good. Everybody's got bills paid and uh, everything's caught up at home. And I feel pretty good tonight. I'm not sick. I don't have a little cough. And, you know, uh, but, but when you get all by yourself and you're all alone, then it's easy also to say, well, you know, I'm here. I'm not really feeling good. And, or, I mean, it's just Wednesday night church. I can't believe anybody would let those words come out of their mouth. It's just Wednesday night. To me, it's just as important as Sunday. It's just a Friday night service, but that's just as important as Sunday morning. Because this is why I say it's just as important, because he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm going to be in the midst. So I guarantee you, Jesus Christ is going to be here, whether you're here or I'm here or not. How many knows the pastor don't have to be here for Jesus to show up? If your worship is different because the pastor's not here, something may be wrong with you. It's not Jesus' fault. It's not Jesus' fault because somebody got sick or not here or, or pastors out of town. And Jesus says, I'm going to go because I love them and I promise them if two or three gather together, I'll be in the midst. So what he was saying here, God had given him value. But what he did was Esau didn't value what God had given him, but he was concerned only about what the immediate needs were. And I feel like if we're not careful, church, you and I, we will work on what the immediate need is right now. And that's all we focus on. And we lose focus of the long-term focus that we should have in our life. And we, we operate as a generational uh, immediate needs. What, am I, what is my need now? And that's all we can see. And that drives us. And that puts us into our position that we are in on our spiritual life too because we work off immediate needs. What's happening now? What's going on around my life now? Uh, but let me ask you, have you thought about long-term focus? What am I going to be doing? It's what uh, one person sitting in my office today, he and I were talking. He remembered a sermon that somebody preached uh, here. I think it might have been at men's conference. But he said something about what is my, what am I, what is my five-year term from now going to be? What am I going to be doing five years from now? If I ask you that tonight, what is, your, what is your goal for five years in your life? What do you think about happening? And this preacher says, I really can't tell you what five years is going to be, but I do want to tell you this, I just want to be serving God in five years. I don't know what my health's going to be like in five years. I don't know what the doctor's going to tell me uh, when the next physical checkup I go to of, of, of some kind of bad. I don't know, but this is one thing I do want to know. In five years from now, I want to have a long-term focus that I'm still going to be serving God. Whether if it's pastoring a church, whether if it's evangelizing, whether, I don't know what God's going to do in five years. How many knows a year can change a whole lot of stuff? A year can change your, the way you operate today. You might be running uh, miracle laps next year, this time, after that surgery that's coming, you fixed to have a, another bionic hip put in, I guess. And so you might be running a, a lap. So, but you never know what next year is going to bring. But this one thing we need to make up in our mind tonight is as for me and my house, we're still going to serve the Lord. We're still going to be serving God in five years. I may have a different job, but I'm still going to be serving God. Come on. I may have a different, a different car, but I'm still going to be serving God. I may not live in town, but I'm still going to be serving God. And that's what we have to make up in our mind today, not, not to work on 
or, op, or, or have this immediate situation in our life. That ain't what you got to have. Work on the immediate, but you got to have the long term. The problem here with this mindset of having immediate needs met is, is that we, it leaves no room for the things that eternal values. It don't leave any room for that because all I'm consistently worried about is what's happening now. In other words, uh, uh, the eternal things of God is what we should be focusing on more than the immediate things. Of course, I know we all like to think that we have enough common sense to and intelligence to make good decisions. And we feel like we can make good decisions. But this is the thing. As followers of Christ, we must realize and rely upon the Lord's wisdom more than we do our own. Even though I'm not saying there's nobody here that probably is not wise. You, you made a wise choice. You made it here tonight. You make wise choices. You got a car that drove you here, and you got a home. You got a roof above your head. You got food in your pantry. You're doing what's right. So undoubtedly, you're making some kind of wise choices. So I'm not saying you're not wise, but I feel like if we're, we, if we're going to have a long-term focus point, we need to make sure we rely upon God more than we rely upon ourselves. And I can show you according to uh, Proverbs 3 and 5, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. How many knows your own understanding to get you in trouble? Your own understanding will make you feel like that you got it all figured out and, and you'll, you'll, you'll go to your grave sometimes believing it's just the way it is. Bless God. But how many knows if you'll learn to trust in God and lean not to your own understanding, verse 6 says what he'll do is he says, And if you acknowledge or in all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct thy paths. God has the answer for you. But like I said a while ago, sometimes we, when we go to God in prayer, we really know what we want. And we'll, we'll go all the way out of our way, no matter what it costs us to get what we want. But then we fall, we want to say, wonder why God didn't help me with it. Wonder why God didn't bring me through that. Wonder why God didn't deliver me from that. You know what? He tried to several times by blocking it from you, but yet and still you went on and opened the road up anyway. And God said, I give you the desires of your heart. Matter of fact, when they gave Saul, when they, they uh, get, made him king, it wasn't who God wanted that, them to have. But they pushed the issue and they pushed it and God gave them what they, okay, if that's what they want, let them have it. And sometimes God would give us things even though it wasn't really what he wanted us to have. But you know what? Then we have to suffer the consequences. Then you and I have to pay the fine. But if we would do this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. I don't know why things are going the way they are, Pastor Hunt. Sometimes it's not because of what God's done, but it's because of what we're not doing. It's not what God does. Sometimes you and I are not doing what we're supposed to do, so God puts us on our own path, and he lets us take our own path. I believe, really and truly believe, God will let you take your own path. But you know what? It, on down the road, I know I have, you have. If I take my own path, instead of, instead of uh, acknowledging him in all, of the, all my ways, I acknowledge my own self, what it's going to do for me, what can I get out of this, what's it going to make me look like, and sometimes we're more, we're more worried about our own, our own uh, uh, character than we are God himself. We're more worried about what we look like and what, what it's going to make us feel like. And I promise you that I, there's nothing in me that, that, that's doing it for what I look like because everything I do is going to be for God himself. Because it's not about me, church. It's not about who I am. And we have to become that kind of person. And then if you do that, God will direct all of your past. I want to look at uh, uh, Luke chapter 10 and show you another story about two sisters here in Luke 10 and 39. These two sisters were, who invited Jesus, which was Martha's house, but so they said, come on in. They invited her on in, and, and Jesus came in, and it said in verse 39, and, and uh, she had a sister called Mary, Martha did, and which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she will help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Now, when I read that to, uh, later, this, earlier this week, I thought, when Jesus begins to spit out a name twice, there's got to be a meaning. There's got to be something there that he wanted. So I, I begin to look it up, and I want you to notice that the Lord uses a double salutation here. And any time he uses that in a situation, it means it's an urgent, there's something urgent here. For I got something urgent to say. I got something to teach you. 
something that was critically important. And so he began to say, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Martha, you've got a lot going on in your mind. You're troubled about all this stuff. Again, that's temporary, but it's immediate attention. It needs to happen right now. How many times do you and I get tied up with things that's got to be done right now? I can't, it can't wait until tomorrow. It can't wait till next week. Let me tell you, nothing, 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 nothing is more important than what you're getting right now. The Word of God. It's not who it's coming from. I'm, not, I'm, I'm the least of least, okay? I, I'm nothing. But the Word of God is more important than what you're thinking or, or, or processing in your mind right now. But this is what he said, Martha, you're so encumbered about with things that don't even really matter, that are temporary. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. I feel you and I are tied up with things that don't even really matter. More than we are focusing on the eternal things of God. It, it binds our minds so strong. And I, I really believe if we can get a hold of what I'm about to tell you tonight, if we can get a hold of this, what I'm trying to put out tonight, nothing would stop us from focusing for that long-term focus that we should have in our life. we got to develop it tonight more now than we ever have before because we are busy people. we got so much on our plate to do. So much is going on. Y'all know we can name it all day long. I've got to. I got to trim the bushes. I got to weed eat. I got to cut. I got to vacuum the house. I got to wash clothes. I got to cook dinner. I got to make sure the kids are are, are 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 ready for school coming up in a couple months. So I'm gonna go out shopping and buy school clothes. And you know, Saturday's the only time I got to go shopping. I got to make sure I got this. Our schedules are so overwhelmed and so busy that we sometimes don't even have time to take a moment and just pray. Take a moment and fast. Take a moment and make sure my children are, are at church first. Make sure they are in, on time for Sunday school. Make sure they're in the right positioning. I'm going to tell you, if your kid's not faithful in Sunday school, something's wrong with our dedication. Something has fallen between the cracks. Uh, we got to make sure we're not, we're not focusing on the immediate things, uh, but the long-term vision. My kids have got to know about God at all costs. And that's where Mary, Martha was. Martha was so busy and working in her busyness, making sure her house was clean, making sure that food was served to the guest. Our guests are important. We want that. We have to have that. But watch what he said in verse 42. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen the good part. The good part was, which shall not be taken away from her, he said, by the way. And let me just say this before I get, before I get to say it. Serving is important. Serving is important. It's an important part. As a matter of fact, it's, it's a in part of our vision statement for our church, which I know all of you can quote it, but it says that everybody will be actively serving. That's, that's, serving is a very important part. We have to have that. It's a part of our vision, and we're going to keep it a part of it. And we want everyone actually serving, but never should serving hinder our long-term focus. Never should serving, if you ever become serving the church and you have that Martha spirit, nobody else is serving. Nobody else wants to help. Everybody else is. Then. Well, you know what? You have automatically let that interfere with what really the main thing you're serving for is because you've got a long-term focus on the eternity. That's what I'm doing it for. I work around the church. I don't mind taking garbage out. I don't mind picking up things. I don't mind serving and, and working and doing things that need to be done around there. It doesn't bother me a bit. But if I start getting mad because nobody else wants to do it, then my spirit is not where it needs to be. Oh, somebody help me preach right now. Y'all are listening very well. Let me just let me plug this in since we're going to be preaching on holiness in the next couple of weeks. And you don't want to miss Sunday school. If you're late for Sunday school, you're not going to hear it. But it's going to be on Sunday school. But... This is what I saw a lot of people that, that uh, live a holiness life. Y'all ready for this? They don't love it. They don't love it. They, they, they do it because they know the Bible says thou shalt do it. And they know the Bible says this is the way you do it. But if you don't love it, you'll find problems with people that don't do it. You'll start having a bad spirit toward people that are not lined up the way they should be. Come on, I've seen people get mad and quit church because somebody's skirt was shorter than it should have been. 
Oh, y'all want me to preach there a little while? Come on, apostolics. If you love your holiness, you're going to do what's right. You're going to live it, and you're not going to be mad because somebody else cut their hair across the church and you ain't able to cut yours. Oh, that's, that's good preaching whether you like it or not. But I'm, I'm reading somebody's mail right now. But you've got to fall in love because you know why? Because you've got a short-term mindset. You've got, a, you've got an immediate mindset. It's got to be like this right now. But when I see somebody that's struggling in that area, I say, God, touch them, Lord. And I'm going to keep my holiness on the whole side, outside, in. I'm, I'm going I'm to do it because that's the way it has to work. And I'm not going to judge that person. across. I'm going to keep preaching about it. But I'm not going to down them and, and pull them out. But I'm going to say, God, i got a long-term focus. I want that person to come out of that that they, they have in their life. I want them to have a, a new touch in their life. And, and I have been praying for people, it, it seems like 10 or 15 years, and I see no change. Brother Hunt, you ought to just kick them out. No. i got a long-term focus. I see a spiritual, that, a life that needs to be touched. I've seen people live like this when it comes to holiness. i also seen people live like that when it comes to attitude, too, in churches. I've seen that, but you know what? Uh, I can't say they're no good, get rid of them, kick them out. No, what my job is to say because I'm developing a long-term relationship with God, and I want their life to come closer to God. So, yes, serving God is very important, but we have to have that long-term focus. Focus. Um, what happened here, uh, we should never, we should, we should be serving God at all times, but never should we let it hinder our long-term focus. Martha had lost her long-term focus for the immediate service that was only temporary. Think about it. She lost that that she should have had with God because she she began to look at a short-term service. This is what she was looking at, something that was temporary. If you're constantly preoccupied with immediate needs, watch this, and desires, and you ask the Lord to help you understand, my friend, He will. If you're constantly got things that you can't seem to get over because I can't get focused on church because I'm thinking about what's going to happen after church. I can't get focused what's going on in church because I'm worried about who's, who said this across the way. Who's, who might have said this. you got to pray, God, help me get that out of my mind. And guess what? He will. He'll clear that out of your mind, especially if something like that really does bother you. The best way to start is get on the front row. If you ever see something that, 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 that bothers you during church and you can't worship, move to the front row. That's the first thing to do. And then ask God, Lord, help me stay focused on you. If it's ever been a time that we're losing focus, it is today. I've never seen how many people can lose focus in a Pentecostal church than I have today. When I was growing up, it's like everybody's on the edge of their seat. They wanted to have church. They didn't care who was back behind there or who was out here or who said it. But nowadays, it's almost like we all are living with ADHD. Seriously, we can't stay still in a church. It's up and down like popcorn, running in and out, doing this, doing that. And, and I, I just can't stay. Well, I, believe, I purpose, really believe some people might even pinch the kids sometimes just to get out of the church. I don't know. Now, I know you don't do that. You wouldn't do that. But I, we live in a time that we lose focus so easy because we're more worried about the immediate things in life. But I promise you if, you're, if you're, if you're preoccupied with those immediate needs and desires, like I say, if you ask the Lord, he'll help you understand what you need. He'll send in help. He'll, he'll send in help for your future. He'll put the right things in your mind. But uh, when you read his word, watch this, and you ask for guidance, a path, God, God will give it to you. He'll, he'll, he'll bring it into you if you'll just start putting the Word of God in front of you. Church, what we need to know, as was, was tr as true for Esau as in our text tonight, was certain decisions that we make will have a long-term consequences in our life. Let me say that again real slow. Certain decisions that you make will, will probably for sure have a long-term consequence in your life. You would deal with it all of your life. So you have to be careful the consequences you make or the decisions that you make today because it will get in your consequences all your life. So stay with me now. So, so trust the Lord. Be careful. Consider the eternal outcome. What, what's going to be the eternal outcome in this situation that I'm making right now? What's it going to do in my life? What, what is this going to what, what's it going to do for me, this eternal outcome, before you make that commitment of whatever you committed your life to, whatever you committed things to? I really feel that too many make commitments. Y'all watch this. I wrote this down in black letters, bold letters here. Make commitments on immediate temporary things 
and they lose that long-term focus because they never developed a long-term focus in their life because they work on the immediate, what's happening right now. A lot of times that's the only thing that people can live on is what the preacher preached right now. And then, but guess what? Then when somebody else says something, it brings you another thought. Then you go to another thought, and you can't get that long-term focus in your mind. And then if you have that, Everything that comes your way, is going to, it can easily distract you. It can easily pull you away. But this is what we have to learn to do today in our life. You have to make that develop, develop it in your life today. And I am going to stand for God. That's what Joshua did when he said, it's for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He stood that day. He made that, he, he made that commitment that day. That meant no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we're still going to go to the house of God. No matter how hard i got to push, I'm still going to make a way. I had somebody tell me today, and they may be watching the video today. I don't know, but, but this is what they told me. They said, I understand that you're committed hardcore and, and you know, because this is your job. This is just what you do, and you're always here, and you always do that. And I politely looked at him, and I said, yeah, but before I was pastor, and I was that way. Before I became pastor, I was that way. I didn't wait until I started preaching before I got dedicated to God. Come on, I didn't wait until I, 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 I always been sold out for God. I, I have missed uh, one Sunday for working in the last 20-something years that I've been living for God, or 35 years I've been living for God. I had, my, I had an ox in the ditch. I did, Sister Turner. I had something I had to really get done. I had a job I had to get done. It just wasn't going to, I mean, I, I was just so far behind. I jumped in my truck, and I said, I just missed Sunday school. I'll go to church tonight. We had two services back that time. I was trying to justify with God. i at least go to one, God. At least I'll be at one. I had an ox in the ditch, God. I had to go to work. I ran down there, and I was going to cut a tree down. I thought it's, nobody's in the way, and everybody, everybody's out of the way. You know, I had all kinds of reasons, excuses why. I cut that tree down, and it fell on top of this $400,000 home. I'm glad it wasn't a big one, but it did knock the, uh, the roofing off and the gutter off. And, and I jumped in there. I pulled that tree off the house, and... And I said, well, I'm going to go catch the preaching anyway. I won't get there until 1130, but I'll be there for preaching anyway. I made it for preaching. And guess what? That, to me, I had to make the statement in my mind. I had to commit to my life. That was before pastoring, by the way. Before pastoring. I wasn't pastoring. I just knew that what I wanted to do was make a long-term focus committed to God. And I did that day. And guess what? I haven't changed. And I'm going to keep that focus on God. Because I realize if I work on the immediate things today, I will get discouraged when they don't go my way. How many, how many knows I don't get my way all the time? I know some of you husbands get all of y'all's way with y'all's wife. But sometimes I don't. I don't get my way. Sometimes I have to just surrender and say, okay, whatever, you know, whatever is best for you. And it's all right. And, and Hey, I pastor a church, and I, I, I do things around here that I don't like. Why is that, brother? You know, I, some things I don't care for. But you know what? It's, it's not about just me. I understand we got 200 members of this church, and I realize if we got that many members, some people may like this. Some may, but the thing is, I'm not in it for what I like and dislike on things in the church house. I'm in it because I made a commitment with God, and I sold out to God many, many years ago. I didn't just start tonight. Many years ago, I said, God, I'm going to follow you no matter where you take me. And he said, I want you to go to Carville, Tennessee and pastor there. He didn't tell me, and every time you get your feelings hurt, I want you to quit pastoring and leave. We can't do that. I understand my feelings are going to get hurt. I understand I'm going to have bad days. I understand things are going to go rough. And I understand I'm going to get uh, this to happen and that happen. But this is the thing I understand the most. I've got a long-term focus, and I've developed it not just last night, but I have developed it ever since I started this race, and I'm still developing it. I'm still working on it. I hadn't made it to heaven yet. I hadn't made it to heaven yet, so I'm still working and developing on my relationship with God every day. So we have to trust the Lord, and we have to carefully consider the eternal outcome before we make these commitments. If we're not careful, it would, it would break us down. So develop. What do we develop, Brother Hunt? If you look up the word develop, it says grow or cause to grow and become more mature, advanced, or elaborate. So the thing is, if we're not growing, we're dying. I don't care how old we get. If we're not growing, we're dying. If I'm not moving, something's wrong. 
And this is a thing. Listen to me. To develop, you have to make things happen. To be a developer, you have to make things happen. It's not just going to happen. I know some people have a gold spoon in their mouth, and they, they, they don't have to do nothing. It just, just inherit it to them. But, but even if they don't take that gold spoon and do something with it, eventually it's going to die out. It's going to fade away. It's going to go away. It's not going to be as, as, as it was before you got it. So even today, we have to make things happen. That's what developing is. So how do I develop? How do I make things happen, Pastor Hunt? I'm glad you asked. Develop habits of prayer. I don't know about you guys, but, but last Tuesday night, Brother Bishop, you've done an awesome job on, on that uh, praying in the spirit. And, and I think everybody should hear that. It, it, and, and he may pray in the spirit different than I do, but he gave me an understanding that I, I understand now that I want to be a prayer warrior. I don't want to just talk about prayer. I don't want to just show up at prayer. I don't want to just say, hey, we're going to have 15 minutes of prayer, but I want to become that prayer warrior. I want to become that prayer that I get into the a habit of praying. Amen. I want, I want a, such a habit of praying that never would a piece of food hit my mouth until I pray for about it. That's the, I want a habit of it. I want, I, want to, I want to make it a habit. That's developing something for the future that's going to happen. How do I develop habits, Brother Hunt? You, you, you do it consistently over and over and over. I'm going to be honest with you. I have a habit of coming to church on Wednesday night. My body automatically knows when I wake up on Wednesday morning, boy, you're going to church tonight. Because I got that dude in subjection a long time ago, and I told him, you're going to worship God whether you like it or not. I'm, I, I did. I put him in subjection. He's under subjection to the spirit that's inside of me. So, yes, I have a habit of coming to church on Wednesday. I have a habit of being here on Sunday and Saturday night. I have a habit because I make that habit. I also have a habit of every morning before anything I do, I read the Word of God. That's a habit I have. Brother Hunt, is it just a habit or you love it? I don't have to love it. I, I have a habit. So that I built that habit inside of me. My body wants it. When you have a habit, you can't get enough of it. Make it a habit. Every one of you got a habit. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Some of your habit might be check Facebook. Some of your habit might be got to have a cup of coffee. I, sometimes I'm doing that while I'm reading my Bible. I'm, I can do simultaneously things, you know. But we have this habit. These things go on. But we have to have that habit of Bible reading. Develop habits of dedication to the church and church activities. I'm dedicated to this. And a lot of people think, well, you just do it because you're the pastor. Honey, I've done it before I became a pastor. I was dedicated before I become a pastor. Pastor said, we're going to have a work day. Guess what? I brought all my tools. I showed up for work day. I just thought that's what you're supposed to do. I just thought showing up when the pastor said we're going to have a prayer meeting, I thought that's just what you're supposed to do. I didn't know you had an option after you gave your life to God. Are y'all with me right now? Y'all stand with me? I didn't know you had an option. I just thought that's, that's being sold out. That's, that's developing a long-term focus. I just thought when the pastor said, hey, guys, uh, we're going to fast for three days, I think, oh, God, okay, if that's what he wants. We're going to do it. You know, because I just thought that's the way it operated. But we have to be careful because even though you develop these things in your beginning years of living for God, and I'm talking about me right now, God really should, preached to me in this message. If we back off of it with the attitude, I've done my part, I'm going to let the younger generation or just let somebody else have it a while. Even though you did develop that long-term focus in your younger years, if you ever quit or you slow down developing, you can't quit developing, okay? If you quit developing things, these things in your life that I named tonight, you will start turning into that immediate temporary situation of what today brings. Now, I don't know about you, when, it, when Joshua said, it's for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, I don't think he meant just for that day. What's going on right now? Just because I got the opportunity to preach tonight, now I'm going to live for God. I think he had an ideal in his mind that as far as I can even imagine, as far as God even takes me, that's what I'm going to live for God for. So what I'm saying tonight, we have to be careful because you can, if you're not developing, no matter your age, no matter how long you've been in this thing. We've all been in here. We're all adults here. You've been in this way for a long time. Don't never quit what you started out doing. 
Don't never quit the, having the enthusiasm about revival that you had when you first started. If you ever quit having the excitement about church like David had, Friend, you need to go back to an altar and say, God, fill me again with the Holy Ghost. Get that enthusiasm working again. It's almost like uh, a man that works out every day in the gym. He may, he may be fit. He may look like he's got the muscles on top of muscles. But I promise you, if he ever quits the gym and start eating donuts again, he's going to lose a six-pack. And he's going to get a keg instead of a six-pack. Same way in spirituality. If we, if we, don't, if we quit developing and we quit developing our spirituality, we're going to lose that enthusiasm that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. And when the music starts, guess what? I never, 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 I love you, Sister Vivian, but I never worship your songs. I never do. I never have worshipped a song. But I worship the creator of the song. Hallelujah. And when I begin to worship him, that's what brings enthusiasm back into my life, enthusiasm back into my heart. When I begin to worship him, and that's what I do every Sunday, every Wednesday night. So tonight, be careful. Bottom line is this. If we, if we must keep developing, we got to keep developing. we got to keep our, our sight on the long-term focus. Because Martha, listen to me, Martha. Those short, temporary things will take away what you should be doing. Those short, temporary things. Think about it. Everything that you and I did today is temporary. Pretty much. Unless you read your Bible and you fasted all day and you prayed all day. That's the only thing that's going to last eternally. But we live today. Some of you cook. Some of you put away food. Some of you did that. You got your house in order. And it's good to go to home to a clean house. Does everybody feel good when you walk home? And especially when I go home, my wife says, does the house feel good? I say, oh, yes, baby. It's so clean. And it lasts for about two or three days. And then guess what? We do it again. And we do it again and again. But the thing is, what are we doing with the long-term focus? Martha, hear me. Those temporary things are going to take away what you should be doing. To which Jesus said, was good. It was a good part. The good part that you do is not going to be taken away. The things that are, are, are eternal is not going to be taken away from us. If this music come tonight. Our long-term focus tonight, church, is eternity. And we should keep developing and growing our spiritual walk every day. Every day I need to work on this old boy. While well, they sing this song, this old house that I'm living in is in need of repair. The windows and the shutters are letting in the cold, cold air. How many can really say that if we're not careful? That happens. Brother uh, Kalen, you'd like this. It's, they say it's the plumber's house where the pipes leak at. You know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the roofer's house that's got a leaking roof. Yeah. And if we're not careful, it'll be the, the Holy Ghost-filled person that's got shattered windows, windows that are looking at everybody else's tore down houses. You believe how they live and look what they do. And did you see what they did? Did you look over there? And this is the thing we need to learn to do as, as men of God and women of God is look in a mirror, look in a spiritual mirror. God, what can I do? to make sure I'm developing that long-term focus. God, that eternity that's laid out before me, God. Lord, I want to make sure that my house is in order. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. Will we all just close our eyes right now in this place? The Bible said they were all filled with the Holy Ghost where they were sitting. And right now, I want you to ask yourself a question. Is my house in order? Is it as strong today as it was today that I gave my heart to God? Am I just as, th as enthused? Am I just as excited? Or am I more worried about just the immediate attention that my life needs right now? Oh, I'm going to do that. All of that's going to have to happen. But we can't let that be our main concern on the immediate. I'm going to ask you tonight, as I pray for you tonight, is your house in order? Are you ready for Jesus to come back? If he comes for you tonight, are you ready, sir? Are you ready, ma'am? Are you just as excited today as you was last Sunday? Is the church still mean something to you? If not, I want you to come to this altar tonight. And I want you to say, God, pour it back in me again.
God, I want you to reinstill that, that enthusiasm. Reinstill, God, the, the want to, the love, desire that I need for you. God, I want it more now than ever before. Lord, I pray for these sitting in this seat tonight. Lord, I pray your Holy Ghost would minister to them. Lord, in your name, God, I pray, God, I, I, I minister to what you wanted me to tonight. Lord, if we're not careful, we'll lose that long-term focus that we should have for you, Lord, more now than ever before. God, we'll get focused on the temporary things that the world is, is changing on a rapidly basis. We'll get so involved in this mess that don't even matter that we forget, Lord, our soul is weighed in a balance. Our hearts, God, are lost without you, Jesus. But, Lord, I want to open this altar up to whoever wants to come tonight, just wants to pour their heart out to you tonight for a few moments to say, God, I need you now more than ever. God, I want you to direct my past, make my home strong, make sure we're ready to meet you, God, when that time comes. Lord, we want to refocus some things tonight in our lives. We want to focus on you, Lord, more than anything. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. Bless these that are coming to pray. If you want to come, just come. If you want to stand, stand, kneel, kneel, whatever you feel in your spirit tonight, make sure just have a little talk with God. Have a little talk with Jesus and say, Lord, it's me again. Thank you for being with me and being patient with me. Thank you, Lord, for putting up with me. Lord, I know I'm not an easy guy to put up with, but God, you've kept me. You brought me to this day. And Lord, I want to rejoice in it in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's just pray a few minutes, Sister B. Here I am.
lift our hands all across this building tonight. Just say, God, I give it all to you tonight. Come on, let's do what the song says. God, I give my life to you. Will you do it right where you are tonight? Just lift your hands say, God, I just want to be what you want me to be, Lord. Lord, I want you to open my heart, God. Yes, God, your spirit's in this room right now, God. I pray across this sanctuary. Lord, let your spirit minister to us tonight, God. Oh, I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Lord. Yes, I do. I give it all to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we just love you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't you just feel the love of God in this room tonight? Aren't you glad to be a Christian? Aren't you glad that you sold out a long time ago? Aren't you glad you're still developing that relationship with God? I'm still giving my heart to Him 100% in the name of Jesus. Give it all to you, Lord, tonight, Lord. Yes, God. Lord, we praise your name, Jesus. We love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. God bless you tonight. Thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate you. Let's remember the Nance family next couple of days. They're going to have... The funeral for Sister Nance, but uh, Thursday night from 5 to 8 is at Holly Springs Funeral Home for Visitation. And Saturday, uh, Friday, Friday will be from 12 to 2 here for the funeral. So anybody's welcome, the family says, come and let's, let's stand behind him and support this family. Know we love you guys and all the Nance family. And we're going to miss her for surely, but I promise you she's shouting on the streets of gold today. Praise God. I promise you she is. Anything else? If all the ladies would check the Facebook page, if you don't have a Facebook, check with Sister Hunt. We're going to be doing a, a lunch for them at 11 o'clock Friday, and we need everybody like you always do. You always jump in and support and help, and we appreciate all your help and everything. How many is glad to be a part of the family? The family of God, and that's what it's all about. Thank you so much. Amen in Jesus' name. Sister Hunt's got one more announcement. That's right. Sammy Cheryl will be preaching. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. This is a, a church revival. Just the youth will be singing Friday night. There's church revival. Saturday night, Sunday, we're going to have a great time. Again, make sure you don't show up at 10.30. If you do, show up at 10.30 Sunday. Pray, pray for the hour for the church service. Praise God. Yeah. And, but we're going to have a good time this weekend. I promise you don't want to miss it. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. Is it okay to have a revival? How many wants to just go six weeks without stopping? Six weeks. Nonstop. 
I've learned a long time ago, we're going to do something anyway, aren't we? We might be at home in a recliner watching TV. We're going to be doing something anyway. Praise God. Might as well be at the house of God. God bless you. We love you. Shake hands. Be friendly. We'll see you Friday night at 7 o'clock.